welcome back again for this uh, ninth lecture. So this is our ninth lecture for the course data communication. And uh, in this lecture, uh, we are going to look at two concepts. One, the first concept will be on Nyquist rate and Shannon channel capacity. And the second uh, topic uh, that we are going to discuss in this class is about the performance metrics or the measurements, where uh, we are going to define what is a bandwidth now for the data communication. We will define, which we discussed this term in the, uh, in the first part of the module. That's called throughput, right? So I, I use it this term. And uh, we will also uh, look at the another performance metrics, which we again introduce this term while we are, uh, you know, initial classes we are talking. That's called the latency. So here uh, we are going to look at the term called as bandwidth delay product the product of bandwidth and delay, and finally with the jitter. So very less focus uh, at this stage uh, will be given on the jitter. So other four we will discuss in more detail. So let's start with Nyquist channel or Nyquist uh, bit rate. Y, Q, U, I, S. Right, so Nyquist bit rate. So what it is actually. So let's call this as, oh, let me write this as bit rate. So he, there is an expression for this by given by the request, which is given as bit rate, two times of bandwidth times of log base two of L. So where L stands for the levels. Hope you are still remembering that uh, concept of levels and the bit rate, right? So in that topic, when we are when we are discussing, I should have that notes. Let me go back to that. Yeah, here. So we, we understood there, right? So if I have more number of levels, I can, you know, use more number of and here in our previous class, we were talking about the bandwidth, right? So this is where there is some relationship is there between the bandwidth and the bandwidth and the data rate. So, and there is a relationship between this data rate and the number of levels. This complete relationship is what the Nyquist gives. Okay, so this is called Nyquist bit rate. So there is a relationship which said, so if I increase more number of levels, there is an increase in the bit rate, right? Similarly, if I, if I have a very larger bandwidth, then more number of bits can be transmitted in a given second. So that's what it means. Does it mean that, see, the bandwidth is, is a physical resource. So it is limited. I cannot just go on increasing that. There's a limited spectrum that I can use. So bandwidth is a tight uh, kind of resource for me. So it means that if I just go on increasing the levels, then I can get a higher bit rate. I mean, what I mean to say is, see, I'm having a very small bandwidth, something like of two gigahertz, so not two gigahertz, somewhere around uh, 100 megahertz, a very small bandwidth I'm having. And with this, with our uh, earlier relationship, that what we derive bandwidth is equal to n by 2. So n I can have is twice of it, right? 
So I should get 200 Mbps if levels are only just two, correct? So if levels are two, so this will be one. And this is two times of 100 uh, kilohertz. So 100 uh, megahertz. So I'll get it uh, somewhere around 200 Mbps. Very good. Okay. Now, if I increase this more and more levels, like if I use eight levels, then this will be three into 100 megahertz into two. So increasing the more number of levels, the bitrate has increased. Do you agree with this? Right? I hope that you get this point. So I'm using only one level. My bandwidth is a physical uh, resource, uh, where a natural resource that I'm having and uh, uh, there is a limited to me. I cannot just go on using the higher and higher frequencies. That's not possible. Okay? So only a limited uh, range is given for me to use. So what I'll do is to increase the bit rate, I will increase the more number of levels because that's what we, we have already understood. Yes, theoretically it is correct. We have to agree with that. But if I'm having more number of levels, it means at the decoder side, we are putting more burden on the hardware side. So that care also need to be taken. Now let us take what is called as a Shannon channel. Shannon channel capacity. So this we can call it as C, which, which is the relationship that is a bandwidth, right? Log into log base two of one plus SNR. Okay, he defines with this what is called as Shannon channel capacity. It says that uh, this is the number of bits that you, uh, any um, uh, mechanism that we devise for communication can transmit. Okay, we cannot just transmit uh, whatever the bandwidth that is there. The whole uh, bandwidth will not be efficiently be able to. So there is some capacity, there is some limit that he explains. So you can call this as a uh, one one limit, okay. So it says it is bandwidth into log two of one plus SNR. So now you see in this channel capacity, noise appears, whereas here we don't see noise. Okay, now the Nyquist bit rate is with respect to noiseless channels. Okay. And whereas the channel channel capacity is considering the noisy channel. Right? So what actually it means? So if, let's take on an example for this. Okay. So... So the example will be like this. Say if I am having a bandwidth, right? So bandwidth of this channel is two megahertz, right? And the value of SNR is very high. I mean, it is very very low. If it is zero, right? So if I am taking it as zero, log two of one is again is zero, my channel capacity, even though I have very good band, because of very uh, large amount of noise, my uh, signal cannot be transmitted. So the noise limits the capacity of the channel, right? So here, whatever, if there is no noise, then this theory will definitely apply. So that gives me some kind of, uh, what do you call it, the upper bound. Right? And whereas the, uh, I mean, sorry, the Nyquist gives some kind of the upper bound. So that is the maximum uh, bits that you can transmit. When a, a, you know, certain amount of noise is present in the signal. Okay, let us take, uh, uh,
One more example I'd like to take. Yeah, so let us take this. Now we are having a bandwidth of, let's take uh, three, five kilohertz. So we have a bandwidth of, uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. So three kilohertz, right? And uh, the SNR value of this is 3162. So these are the standard numbers for any telephone line communication. So if I compute this value of C, <clears throat> we are able to transmit somewhere around 34.8 kilobits per second. So on a telephone line, this is the channel capacity, the upper limit, the higher limit, not beyond this we cannot transmit on a telephone line, which is working on bandwidth of 3 kilohertz and uh, which is having a measured SNR value of somewhere around 3162. Fine. I hope you are getting the point here. Right? So let us see the performance of these channels, which is the second topic of the class. So we have first bandwidth. So bandwidth is represented now in terms of hertz and also bit rate, right? Bits per second. So the number of, when, it, when I say bandwidth in terms of hertz, it is the range of frequencies which are transferred with uh, out any ideally without any attenuation and bits per second is at what rate that we are going to transmit this and we have seen uh, a relationship uh, between these two also right so the second performance is throughput throughput is a measurement uh, you know to tell how fast we are sending the data. Okay, let's take an example for this. Okay, we will, we will we will take an example. Okay, so we are having a bandwidth, right? So we are having a bandwidth which is of 10 Mbps. So I'm having a bandwidth of 10 Mbps. And number of frames that I'm going, I mean the chunk of data that I'm going to send. Okay, number of pieces that I'm having. So let me call this as NF, number of frames. Okay, so we are having 12,000 frames. Okay, so we are generating, okay, that number of frames per minute. Okay, so 12,000 frames. It might be like a, in our video, in one minute, 12,000 frames are being taken and we are transmitting it. Okay, and we need to transmit that on a 10 Mbps bandwidth on, a, on this line. Fine. And each of this frame, so there are 1,000 bits per frame. So what it means is, I'm having a video capturing device. It is capturing some event. And it is generating frames, correct? And there are 1,000 to, sorry, 12,000 number of frames. And each frame, we are using 1,000 bits. And that is transferred uh, on a transmission line with a bandwidth of 10 Mbps per second. So in one second, we are trying to push 10 MB. So what is the throughput of this? So we need to compute the throughput of it. Right? So it means how fast the number of bits that we are now actually transferring. And with this 10 MB. If I take this frame and the size of each frame, how fast we are going to transfer it. So this we can easily compute it as 12,000 frames. Each frame is having uh, uh, 1000 bits and this is happening in a minute so I need to convert it to seconds so I'll divide it by 60 and uh, this 
is the number of this is the rate at which we are sending on this. So actually we can send 10 Mbps, but we are pushing the amount of data that is 2 Mbps only. So the throughput is uh, one fifth of uh, uh, the bandwidth. Fine. So that is that is the significance of this thing. Fine. So that is how many, uh, uh, you know, at, at what speed we are sending the data on a, on a given height. Uh, you, you can call it like some, we can easily relate it to the traffic, right? So if, if we have a lane, highway, uh, where I can, there is a limit, right? I can send like 1,000 vehicles or 2,000 vehicles. So that will be the standard design. And now because of the traffic, uh, we might get like only 2,000 uh, vehicles are going. So if it crosses more than the bandwidth, then there will be a congestion, traffic jams. So similar kind of phenomena is what we see in data communication. There is a good bandwidth that is given to you in the college, in your uh, Wi-Fi network. And uh, only three or four people are using, so you get a good data. The throughput is good. Now, when the number of users in your block, in your, uh, your friends, more number of friends will come into the block, so the congestion will start to increase. It means the traffic will start increase. Bandwidth. Uh, now your throughput will start to reduce. You will get your uh, system can only have a very small amount of throughput. Of course, uh, there are many methods that can be uh, applied here to maintain the throughput. So uh, we will discuss that in the higher higher part of the slide. Okay, so the third uh, kind of measurement we do is delay bandwidth. This is a unitless performance. There is no unit for this. So we take a product of delay and the bandwidth. So first, let me tell what you mean by delay. So we are transferring information in the network and after some time, Okay, it will not be immediately happening, right? So we insert some data and it will take some amount of time to reach. Now, what are the components that will happen? So this is called a latency. Okay, this delay, overall delay is called a latency, which is propagation time. So let's call this a steep propagation plus the time we take to transmit that frame. Let me call this as the trans. Right? This is some length of the frame. And it takes some time to transmit the whole frame. So that's called the uh, uh, transmission time of the frame. Okay. Then we have the queuing time. The waiting time. You know, when it reaches to any node, there is a buffer that makes us to wait. So the data will be stored for some time. And there is a processing delay. Let me call this as process. So the latency, the delay in the network is because of these four components. Generally, the queuing time and the processing time will be very less when compared to the propagation time and the frame transmission. So we can uh, uh, take one uh, simple example here. Now, we have two points, okay, two end devices. So the distance between these two devices, let's take it somewhere around 12,000 kilometers. And we will assume that the propagation speed of this electrical signal is uh, 2.4 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Uh, this is true for any copper wire. Okay, so the two points are connected with this copper wire. So what is the propagation? Okay, so can you compute and tell me what is the uh, propagation time? Easy to compute, d by t, right? The, the time you want to consider is d by the speed, right? So uh, c is the velocity d by v. So we are having this 
12,000 kilometers is there, I need to convert it to meters divided by the speed of it, right? So the velocity. Okay, so this will somewhere I'll get this 50 milliseconds. The time it will take to transfer uh, over uh, uh, this uh, this kind of transmission wire with 2.4 a uh, into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second, it will take around 50 milliseconds. Now, if I'm using the message size or your frame size of 1000, right? And if my data rate of this, the bandwidth that I'm going to use, let's call that uh, I am using one GBPS band. Okay, one gigabits per second. Then I can say that my transmission time will be 1000 divided by one into 10 to the power of nine, which is 0 0.020 milliseconds, correct? So the total latency that I'm going to take is 50 milliseconds plus 0 0.02 milliseconds. So that's how uh, we can, uh, th that's how we can see the, the, uh, the point, the importance of this thing. So there is some delay in the transmission. So if I'm having a delay, and if I take the bandwidth, so there is a trade-off, right? So if I want lower, uh, if there is a lower delay, then there is a, uh, what do you call, it? a larger bandwidth is needed. So this trade-off will be there. So higher the bandwidth, uh, we are going to transmit that message quickly, okay? So that is uh, about the uh, concept of it. And finally, there is a jitter, that is the uh, delay that is varying between these messages. So that needs to be maintained. So more of those concepts, uh, we will take it in our later classes. Okay, so let us see any example. Okay, so some exercise problems are there in the textbook. Uh, I have solved few in my notes, uh, that is Allah there along with this video lecture. Hope uh, you will be able to solve that. Fine. Okay, so that, uh, this ends our uh, first module uh, of this. And in this module, we understood, uh, you know, the, the idea of data communication. What is data communication? Then we started with network, then LAN, WAN, internetwork, and internet. And uh, we have seen that this internet or networking is having its own architecture and a very popular architecture is TCP IP architecture. That is the scope of our syllabus also. And uh, uh, in that architecture, there are five layers, physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, finally, the application layer. And in this course, we are understanding the last bottom two layers, that is the physical layer. And we discussed the first part of the physical layer, where we uh, saw what you mean by transmission. Right, the impact, the concept of bandwidth, the idea about the Nyquist rate and the Shannon channel capacity. Right, so that's what we have discussed. And in the second module, uh, we are going to focus on uh, the conversion. Because we have we want to convert from digital to digital conversion. Uh, that is, we call it as a line coding. Another very interesting uh, topics and uh, the modes of transmission. And al along with that, we will see uh, how we can convert a digital signal to an analog signal and an analog signal to digital signal. We have seen uh, the drawbacks with the digital signal uh, because of the harmonics. So now we will, and we also see that there is a broadband transmission. So we need to convert this digital signal to analog signal so that I can 
shift it to higher frequencies. So that's that's what we are going to discuss in the uh, next uh, in the second module. Fine. Okay. So that's the end of this class. So thank you very much.